Hi everybody, I'm Charles Jaeger with Jaeger Film. I'm going to be showing you how to create a 360 video using 2D footage shot on like a normal DSLR on a green screen. And we're going to take a look at just working with 3D models in After Effects and how we can project that in 360 and a couple other things I've been working on recently. So we're going to go ahead and jump into that. So I've got a tutorial on Metal.com showing kind of how to do this. And I'm just going to bring up a few things from that briefly to kind of give you an overview of how it was done. So Right here's a screenshot. So this is a 360 video rendered out of everything is 2D. So I've got a person on the green screen, which is actually me. And I've got some walls set up in kind of a room. There was a Duran Duran 360 music video, and this is kind of made to be that style. So I just kind of mimic it, show how people can create that. So really when you want to start this out, how this is done, you want to shoot your actor on a green screen, probably a much bigger green screen than this. This, again, was just for the tutorial. But just kind of give you an idea of how this can be done. So Doing it this way, though, you can get a much higher resolution 360 video because a normal 360 camera is wrapping 4K completely around 360. Whereas in this case, you could shoot this with a GH4 or 4K, and you could have a much higher resolution person right there, and you can comp that into a 360 video. So you're going to get a lot more pixel density, and it's going to look a lot sharper. And I'll show you kind of the benefits of that. So let's go ahead and jump into the project. Okay. So inside of After Effects, we've ran a script from Metal. It's included with their plugins called Skybox Creator. And what this does, it creates a virtual six camera rig. So like a GoPro camera rig, but we're creating that virtually in 3D space. So I'm looking at this from like an alternate perspective, but this center right here is a 360 camera. There's my person that I've keyed out from the green screen. I've placed them just in the After Effects 3D space. Got a logo, a couple other elements in here. Let's take a look at what that projects like now in 360. So that's giving us an output that looks like this, which is an equirectangular 360 video. This is a very simple version, but that's what that's outputting to, and that's what we would upload to YouTube to have a virtual 360 video. But if we want to see what that looks like in a viewer, we can come in here and now scroll around. And so you can see there's our actor that we have on the green screen. And because we're directly in the center, and we're not moving from the center, we're just rotating, we're not going to have any parallax issues, so you're technically not going to be able to tell if this was a flat 2D image in 360 space. So it's kind of like tricking the camera, tricking the perspective. So you can see I have a piano that I've comped in here and see it's got ambient occlusion, that kind of thing. So you could really get into a lot of detail kind of faking this to make it look like real 360 degree space. And actually, let me pull up a video that I've got and this is rendered the exact same way. So this is with Element 3D and After Effects. It's a video rendered out with that same virtual camera rig. And so I'm just gonna play this back. And so now you can see we can look around here so we have a full 360 degree video rendered out from After Effects. And again, we don't have a 360 camera, we don't have anything like that. We just are doing our normal After Effects workflow with this plugin. We have an airplane flying over us. But there it went. So you can get pretty creative doing this. And again, really not changing up your workflow because if you're making this scene in After Effects, it's already in a 3D space. So now we're just rendering it out in full 360. All right. And here's another 360 degree video that I did using that same method. This is a countdown video. It was actually created for one of Metal's contests. So let me let this roll through. We'll kind of scroll through and check this out. So this is supposed to be like a dream sequence countdown. So we've woken up here. We don't know what's going on. <laughs> And so, again, this is completely in 360 space, all virtual. Sound design helps sell that one. So anyway, so we're going to be doing kind of more of a simpler version of that. And that's what we've got here. So let's take a look at how easy it is to add something back into this and kind of give you a little more perspective. Now let's add in a billboard. Let's see if I've got one here. All right. So I've got a flat 2D render of a billboard, and I want to go ahead and add this to this 360 space. So I'm going to make this 3D. So now we can see that billboard. And what we need to do is we need to make sure, if we want to put this in our scene, the secret is it always has to be facing directly toward the camera. So if we move this out, and we'll do kind of a quick demo. So if I move this away from the camera rig, I need to rotate it around, and it always needs to be facing our rig, no matter which perspective we're at. So the way we do that, 
is we're going to create a new no object. We're going to make that 3D. And we're going to parent our billboard to that no object. So then we can use that no, which is directly in the center of our scene, to rotate and move that around. So wherever we rotate that to, it's now going to be in the center of the scene. Let's see here. Yeah, so just like this. And then if we need to move it back in Z space, we can just manually move it back. Yeah. So we come back to the viewer. We need to refresh this view. That's one of the things that has to be done every time we preview this. So we'll refresh that. Now we should be able to see the billboard in this 360 space, hopefully. Yeah. So we can see it back there. So when we jump back into the viewer, we can come over here and look. And there's our billboard. So again, you can see, as long as it's facing directly toward the camera, it's going to kind of give the impression that it's in, existing in that 360 space. So if we take a look at that stockroom scene, actually, I think we previewed this earlier for people. So this is another video that was created in the same method. So it's kind of like the Matrix stockroom scene. So I've got actor on a green screen. Using Element, we just did some of the weapons coming through. So we can scroll through this, and you can kind of get a perspective of what it looks like. So everything slides in, but if we go to the viewer, we can look at this, and so you could see that in a complete 360 space. So it's kind of cool. They can track with the weapons when they fly through. Just get an alternate view, and again, doing this without a 360 camera. So that's pretty much an overview of creating a 360 video all virtually. Now I'm going to show you guys some other aspects and other ways I'm using the metal tools on some other video projects. So what we've got here is a 360 camera, actually a gear camera over there on top of a Jeep, driving down a highway. And we have this camera rig here, and if we look in the viewer, anybody watching this video can look down. They're going to see this rig. That's kind of distracting. So one of the cool things I've seen people do is they actually add in a photo of the camera they actually shot this with, and it kind of gives the viewer a little bit better perspective. And so I'm going to add in actually the GoPro 6 camera rig on top of this, and we can use the Skybox converter to project that camera rig correctly in 360 space. So let's jump back over here. So I've got an image of the camera rig. I just took this on a green screen, easy enough, keyed it out. Now let's apply the effect to it. So Skybox Converter, you can see it kind of bubbles it out a little bit there because we're in this 360 space now. And let's just move it down. And now we're really close to the camera, but when we come back in here and look at this in the 360 space, so the viewer can now look down and they can see, okay, they shot this with a 360 camera. They're going to see the camera now instead of seeing the ugly tripod or whatever else we want. But you can also do this with a logo. But this is kind of just a, a different alternate perspective to get them to view that. Similar method here. We have a shot of a person on a zip line with another Omni camera system. But the tripod here, if we look in close, we can see because of the way it keys everything out, we don't actually see the rig. So let's say we want to composite in the camera to this shot, do the exact same thing. Let's see. Come over here to the viewer. Now when a person's watching this 360 video, they're going to be facing forward going down the zip line. But if they look over, that gives them a little bit better perspective and just kind of helps them understand exactly what they're seeing. So again, we're using Skybox Converter on a 2D image to kind of wrap that correctly in 360 space. Let's keep going. So something else actually that I like to use Metal's tools with is creating environment maps for things like Element 3D, any 3D object. Because we're dealing with a 360 video, we can use this as a reflection map or an environment map on a project. So really what I've got for this is just kind of some example footage. So I took a 
when Pokemon Go was going crazy, I wanted to do a cool kind of gritty Pokeball on the ground with like realistic reflections. And I had a Gear 360. I was like, that would work perfect for, it's kind of the right scale, it worked perfect for creating a reflection map for a Pokeball. So I took the Gear 360, placed it on the ground, and I would take a photo of that with a traditional camera, DSLR. And so the gear is going to give me a image like this straight from the camera, which is the forward and the back facing views from the gear. And so we then we can create an environment map using the Gear 360. So what's cool about this image, though, is we're getting an exact reflection map from the gear. So using Element 3D, I would add in a Pokeball virtually on top of this image, cover up the Gear 360, but then use the footage as a reflection map, which would give me something like this. So you can see the reflections coming off of this image are going to be perfect, and it's going to render super fast because it's, the environment map's already been created. We don't have to render any of that lighting, reflection, anything like that. It's just already pre-comped in there. And so that's kind of a cool way of using Skybox tools. And we can go in there. We can get rid of the little base from the gear so we don't see that. But it's a very quick and easy way to give you some realistic reflections, some refractions, that kind of thing. So here's another example. It's pretty cool. So this was a Gear 360 on a tripod shot with a normal camera. And I'm mapping the environment map from the gear back onto the sphere. This is rendering super fast. This is all an element, which we're getting photorealistic refraction from this glass sphere, or water sphere, whatever you want it to be, in a fraction of the time. If you were trying to do this in a normal Cinema 4D, that kind of thing, it's going to take a long time to render realistic refraction. But here, it's literally in real time. And you can also track the tripod. So then you can actually track this into the scene. It gives you a reference point. Really easy, kind of a cool way of using Skybox tools projecting it back onto an environment map. So that's a cool thing I'm kind of experimenting with right now. And uh, the last thing I'll show you is stitching very quickly from a Gear 360 camera. So we got that two dual lens through kind of some uh, just backwards compatibility. We're able to stitch 2D or two camera footage easily in After Effects using Metal Skybox tools. So let's come over here and take a look at this. So we have a project on metal.com. It's a template for any dual lens camera and also a template for the Gear 360. And so let's take a look now. So you're going to get two comps, footage A and footage B. So I'm just going to drag some footage in here. And it's a square composition, so no matter what size your footage is, just scale it up to fit this comp. And we can scale it down later if we need to. So let me go to... Scale that up. So let's go to footage B. And using this template, automatically this is going to go to the stitch output. And so now you can see, and just doing that, we're going to get a nice equal rectangular image already stitched. And the way this is working is with kind of some scripts and everything set up, connected to all these presets here. And we can adjust the stitch line. So natively, it would come in something like this. And so what we do is we would pull the slider out to spread it out. And now we're just going to watch for this footage to line up correctly. And a good reference back here is this bridge. I think it was like 247 is the correct setting, but we can wing it. That'll work, 245. And so you can then basically line everything up so you don't get a stitch line or reduce the stitch line. And the reason this is better than using a lot of the software that comes with those beginner 360 cameras is when they create the equi-rectangular from that software that comes with them, it's going to compress the video again. So you're getting an MP4 video. It's going to recompress it to another MP4. And the, I mean, it's just going to give you mush. So in this case, we can take that raw video straight from the card, stitch it here. We're not compressing it. We're not reducing it at all. And we can render this out as a high resolution, like a photo JPEG, quick time file, anything like that. Then we can do more post effects to it in Premiere. And then right before we upload to YouTube, we can output that as an MP4. So you're not going to have any blocking or artifacting going on, or you're going to reduce the amount you're going to get. And you can fine tune and tweak things, color correct things very easily with this template. So we can come in here if we needed to offset something, rotate it. You can see we can adjust the feathering going on on the stitch line right there. So it's just going to give you a little more control than a lot of that starter software that comes with beginner 360 cameras. And uh, 
So that's pretty much what I got going on right now. So if y'all have any questions or anything like that, hit me up. Thank you.